Hi, I'm Tyler Pulse. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments as far as what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurzgesagt video called Why Aliens Might Already Be On Their Way To Us. Let's take a look. It's our first limited drop featuring our cosmic pioneer burbs and their space adventures. Only for a limited time on the Kurzgesagt shop. The Don't think those were the aliens they were talking about. <laughs> ...is magnificent and vast. Hundreds of billions of galaxies, trillions of stars, and even more planets. If even the tiniest fraction are habitable, then the universe should be teeming with life. And yet we see nothing, only vast emptiness. Where is everyone else? The answer Probably to this paradox. riddle could be as exciting as it is creepy. We are early, born before almost all other life. But very soon, this may change. Not only might aliens appear, they could quickly surround us. An irreversible competition for the universe <laughs> might be about to begin. While this video is based on scientific papers, we're presenting interesting ideas based on little data and lots of extrapolation. So take them with a grain of salt. Okay. I appreciate the disclaimer, that's good. We need to look at three essential questions to understand the galactic competition. One, how fast can bacteria build spaceships? To become a star-faring civilization, <laughs> life as we know it needs to master a number of very hard steps. It starts with dead stuff turning into the building blocks of life. Then it needs to organize into self-contained cells. Those cells have to learn to work together to form multicellular organisms. This keeps going until complex creatures with big brains learn to use tools and language. Civilization has to be formed from cultures that value progress and technological development. And then they need to actually venture out beyond their home planet. On Earth, life appeared basically as soon as the oceans formed. But then it took two billion years to make the step from single cells to multicellular organisms and two billion more for us to appear. Culture, civilization, and space travel developed super quickly though. Do things always take that long or was this actually exceptionally fast? Also, passing one step does not mean the next one is guaranteed. Yeah. Multicellularity evolved over 25 times independently on Earth, but there's only one species that builds spaceships. We don't know how many steps life needs to pass and how long they take to give rise to a technological civilization, but there are probably many, and it's likely that on trillions of planets... That's true, we don't have enough data to suggest, like, what are, what's the probability of it, what, what's the average, what's the time that it's almost guaranteed to happen. There might not even have been enough time passed in the universe for that last one, yeah. Life has been trying for billions of years. Since we don't see any other technological civilizations out there, it might well be that we are a rare exception. We might be among the first, or even the first, technological civilization in the Milky Way. But this is just one piece of the puzzle. On top of that, we may have just hit the perfect time window. Why does humanity exist now? The universe is already 13.8 billion years old, but it's unlikely that many other technological civilizations had a chance to appear before us. Because in the earlier universe, life would have had a pretty hard time to emerge, let alone thrive, because it was such a hostile environment. Early stars constantly blew up, galaxies crashed into each other, and supermassive black holes vomited massive amounts of radiation. Enough to sterilize galaxies over and over again. Our sun was born right at the end of this cosmic death show. The universe. It would take a lot of omnidirectional radiation to sterilize an entire galaxy, and especially if it's in a 
in a plane that's perpendicular to, to most of the galaxy. It's not like the beam's coming at you, but I guess just the radiation level is that intense because it's a supermassive black hole that we're talking about. But I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. It has never been more welcoming to life than it is now. So humanity has arrived at a very convenient spot in time, maybe the earliest reasonably possible for life to thrive. What about the future? The sun burns brighter than 90% of the stars in our galaxy and will keep getting brighter. In about a billion years, it will boil all of Earth's oceans and then become a giant that swallows it whole. So in the galactic context, the sun is very short-lived. Most stars are red dwarfs that can sustain habitable planets for tens of trillions of years. Yep. Life on these planets has an incredibly long time window to appear and pass the hard steps. It the reason why the whole red dwarf lasts so much longer is think of it as like having your fusion reactor on idle, if you will, rather than go, 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 because you need to sustain that large mass, that large energy reaction. So they can just take their sweet time making hydrogen and helium and the last a very very long time knowing nothing about how rare or common life is this makes it way more likely for technological civilizations to appear sometime in the future than in the past because if civilizations appear at random in the milky way within a time window of a trillion years then very few if any would appear before today then a couple more arrive in this period of a billion years that we're in before all star-faring civilizations that could ever exist emerge altogether. Th <laughs> That's funny. It reminds me of you can change your start date for like each player if you've ever played the game uh, Stellaris. So maybe we were one of the guys that got a got one of the earlier starts. Is what they're saying for our galaxy. Weird tsunami-like distribution is the result of both the hard steps model and something else. A sort of deadline for any spacefaring civilization. Any civilization coming after will find it hard to have room to survive, so all potential life has to cram in before it. Humanity exists now because otherwise we might have missed this deadline. What or who creates this deadline? Why aren't aliens already on Earth? So here's the thing, how do we know that and we're just not an anthill sitting in some mass intergalactic empire <laughs> that's already there? Humans are curious, expansionist, and hungry for energy. We've spread over the world and made it our own. Our technology has been improving over time, first slowly, then breathtakingly fast. If these things don't change drastically and our descendants want to prosper, they will expand into space. We could construct a Dyson Swarm for endless energy and transform planets into new homes. We could cross interstellar distances, allowing us to reach for planets around distant stars. If we have the motivation, we can become a galactic civilization. Oh, a yeah, civilization that does this sort of stuff can be called loud because its activity creates noise. Signs that can be detected <laughs> from far away. Imagine someone in a forest, cutting down trees, starting fires, and laying down roads. The more intense their work, the easier they are to notice. The reason why we're not considered loud now, even though we have omnidirectional radio waves that have been traveling at the speed of light away from the Earth since radio was invented, is because the noise kind of gets filtered out and it gets distorted after about a light year or so. So, the aliens out there aren't going to know what we're saying, or, well... They don't, they, I doubt they speak the same language either way, but you know what I mean? They wouldn't be able to distinguish it from background noise of the uh, cosmos. Expanding technological civilization would probably be hard to miss. Our telescopes would pick up all that energy, and we would clearly identify artificial interference with stars and planets. And another consequence of this business is that it's very disruptive to the environment. Clearing a forest means the end of its wildlife human activity has left no chance for a squirrel civilization to appear. Not because we hated squirrels, it's simply that the thought that they might want to do that at some point never crossed our minds and we needed wood. 
Similarly, if loud civilizations were running around the galaxy in the past, terraforming planets, or harvesting the energy of stars, they may have prevented our existence. Had aliens started colonizing Earth while we were still sludge in the oceans, that sludge would never have turned into humans. This is how loud aliens create a deadline for new civilizations appearing. The galaxy may have trillions of years to create life, but there may only be a short window for it to spread and thrive. Even if a loud civilization respects planets with naturally occurring life and expands around them, like humans do with wildlife reserves, any civilization on such a planet would not be able to expand ever. Trapped forever yeah. on a tiny island. But <laughs> it actually happens in that game Stellaris, a late game civilization shows up and is like, and then immediately when they reach the space age, someone just conquers them. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. Here we are. So loud aliens were probably never here. What about aliens that don't expand? They would be quiet aliens. They're probably limited to one star system and don't have a noticeable impact on their cosmic surroundings. Humanity is like this right now. We wouldn't be able to detect ourselves from the other side of the Milky Way. If yeah. they stay quiet forever, maybe because of their culture or abilities, then they are not really a concern for us. We only have one sample chill. to draw from, humanity. And right now, we are on the path to becoming loud. If we're not special and succeed anyway, then any other civilization with the motivation and resources to would eventually expand beyond its planet of origin. Okay, what are the consequences of all these assumptions and ideas? Grave consequences. Race to the stars. <laughs> if we Doesn't are sound good. early, then eventually others will catch up with us. Civilizations will emerge all over the place. And these new aliens will look at space, see no signs of life, and come to the same conclusion. They exist because loud civilizations have not yet taken over everything. But it only takes one loud civilization to crowd them out of the entire galaxy. They, like us, will face an important decision. Do they stay quiet, take it easy, and tend to their planet for as long as possible, or do they start expanding to take a chunk of the galaxy before someone else arrives? Meeting others does not necessarily... Anything that is similar to how at least human history, I'm thinking they're going to go with option two. War or conflict, but it means that new borders will arise, limits that may persist forever. In the worst case, a civilization could be completely enveloped by the empires of others, eternally doomed to be a galactic backwater without control over their fate. So if we want a seat at the galactic adults' table, we best get to work. If we really are early, we have an incredible opportunity to mold thousands or even millions of planets according to our vision and dreams. Conquer the whole galaxy. And one day when we meet others, we can greet them and meet them as equals. Or superiors. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Wait, what's this? We finally received a signal from the Cosmic Pioneers crew that we lost contact with 10 years ago. Through a special imaging technique called illustration, we're able to reveal what happened to them and immortalize oh, them in our this very like a first comic book or collection. <laughs> oh, okay. These amazing They're getting better with their ads. It's, it's pretty funny. But... Yeah, um, so I know this this video was a lot more speculation than than science, but that's cool. I love thinking about this sort of uh, futurism, alien speculation stuff. Um, one thing they didn't address is the whole hey, we're we're just already within the borders of a vast interstellar empire, and we're just an ant hill. But the aliens are just kind of like don't really pay much attention to us until we do something weird and then we can just wipe us all out. I don't think that's the case, but it is a it's a theory I've heard out there that's kinda that's kinda funny and and humbling at the same time. But yeah, maybe we are the first ones and we can just shape the galaxy the way we want and we might even create alien civilizations based on what type of planets are in each or in each solar system. I mean that's that's a thing. I know they were talking about with their little golden time period for things that can evolve naturally, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's a lot of artificial species, a lot of it that's mostly um, cybernetic or full-on robots. Yeah, it's 
it's fascinating stuff to think about. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.